What's up and welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this. Not only that, but you can do it too. I feel like nowadays, becoming a VTuber can feel totally overwhelming, but in reality, there's only a few things you really need to get started. And we're gonna need a checklist for that. That's better. Now to get started, let's head over to Pinterest. think mood boards are a great way of getting the general vibe of your character all onto one page. I'm gonna be honest, I already know what I want my character to look like and I have literally never used Pinterest before, so enjoy me struggling to add images. Recently, I lost all the files on my computer and I wanted to make this video to show that you really can become a VTuber if you have nothing. The only thing I had left with me were the skills that I'd gained over the years, so I picked myself back up again and I managed to make everything that you see in this video in like four days. Once I built my mood board, I put them all into Photoshop. You don't have to do this, I just think that this is really helpful to take the mood board and make little notes about what you like and what you don't like about the images. This is probably my favorite phase in all of VTuber creation. Now we're going to make some rough designs of what we want our model to look like. If you're not an artist, I would highly recommend commissioning an artist that does a reference sheet or could just do a front view of your character. When designing, I like to choose a semi-dynamic pose because I think it looks cool. You don't need any more than that. <laughs> I drew like six different designs to play with color or even potential outfit changes for lore. <laughs> My favorites from the design phase are most definitely number two and number three. I think with number two, I really liked the leggings and I really liked the tricolored top, but then when it came to design number three, I wanted to try something different on the top and I really liked wearing shorts with the exposed thigh. I think it's a little spicy. And then I also wanted to have socks because I'm a sock addict and I had to admit that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pro tip when designing a model though, work smarter not harder. I decided I wasn't really a fan of the mesh on the socks for the left leg, so I kind of just didn't draw that on the design. Oops. It's model time! When making VTuber model art, I recommend looking up tutorials when you're first starting out, or even just commissioning a live 2D artist. Personally, I like to draw everything in separate layers before rendering, rather than drawing the whole model and then separating it. The only time I work that way is when I'm making pixel VTuber models, but I'll save that for another time. When it comes to making a background, you kind of have two different options. The VTubing community is super generous and there are loads of free to use assets that you can find on Twitter. Just be sure to credit your artist. Along with free to use assets, you can always just commission a background artist or a graphic designer that makes gaming and streaming overlays. If you're having trouble finding stuff you like, then you can always learn to make stuff yourself. I like to use Canva for my designing needs. I didn't really know where to start, so I looked at Canva's templates and they had lots of different elements that I found that I wanted to incorporate into my background. I just kind of mashed them together and changed some colors up. As you can see, I didn't want to put too much blue in the background because the blue is supposed to be the pop of color in my design and so I decided to keep that same theme with my background. And with a little bit of trial and error, this is the background I came up with. Here's what the background looks like with my character. This is probably the most complicated step when it comes to becoming a VTuber, and honestly, props to other VTubers who learn how to rig their own model. The software that 2D VTubers are normally rigged in is Live2D Cubism. Links for everything, by the way, will be down in the description. Thankfully, it has a massive free trial period, which gives you plenty of time to rig your model before you even have to start paying the subscription fee for the software. When rigging a model, I like to set up the toggles and then start rigging the eyes, and then I also rigged VBridger on this mouth, but that's more advanced, so as a new live 2D rigger, I would recommend just doing a very basic mouth table. Just a simple opening clothes and smile and frown is more than enough to get started VTubing. The head angles can be difficult if you're new to all of this, so I recommend starting with a practice model or two, and there's also links for that in the description. After I do the head angles, I rig the body and the physics, and I know the physics engine looks incredibly complex, but you can learn a lot with practice. I recommend starting with rigging some booba, but that's just me. <laughs> I can't say that! <laughs> Throughout the whole rigging process, I like to do tests in VTube Studio just to see how my model's coming along. It's also a great way for me to test out like extreme head angles and tilts and physics and see how things would react because the program is a bit different than the rigging software. Speaking of VTube Studio, let's get you all set up. 
You can set up your VTuber model in any software that supports live 2D models for facial tracking. I personally recommend VTube Studio because there's tons of fun extensions you can get, like this one I have so Gummy can talk. Hi everyone, I'm Gummy. When it comes to recording content and streaming, I like to use OBS. So I guess now I'm all prepared for my VTubing journey. Leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the flip side. And that's the end. Wow.